So today we are comparing two of our most favorite trailers. It is the 13 foot fiberglass trailer versus the 13 foot vintage trailer. So there's going to be some background noise here. The family's in there getting ready for breakfast. But I just want to start with towing. I think that's the first spot that was an obvious difference between a fiberglass trailer and a vintage trailer. Now, as you all know, we take that little Toyota Matrix of ours, four cylinder, and we found a way to efficiently tow the 13 foot Scamp trailer. Now you can go back and watch the videos, but basically at first we were filling the water tank and it was too heavy. We then stopped filling up the water tank and took water with us in jugs spread throughout the camper to distribute the weight. And honestly, we got to a point where we were at like two and a half RPMs, 2,500 RPMs, wherever we went, passing cars, going up mountain passes. You could barely feel it behind you. So we just went an hour out of town through Alaska and then back out to our campsite, then in for food, and now we're leaving our campsite again with this scamp on, with this four cylinder vehicle, we're still on full. Now this trailer, it comes in at the same weight of vintage trailer as a little 13 foot fiberglass trailer, but the towing does not feel the same. So the big difference between the two is just the shape of these trailers. As you know, a fiberglass trailer is nice and rounded. It doesn't have these solid edges that catch the wind. And you can see the difference. When we're pulling this thing, it's such a difficult trailer to pull that I can tell the little Toyota Matrix, the four cylinder, would not be able to tow this. Now pulling it with this little Jeep here, um, no problem at all. Again, this is a very light trailer, so it's going everywhere, but you can feel it. This thing, you know, it tilts a little more when you're hauling it. When you hit a bump, you can feel a little more of that delay where it's kind of pulling. And one thing we're not gonna talk about yet, but until we get into the interior, there is a big difference between the two trailers in tongue weight, and that's due to layout of the trailer. So while towing these little trailers, one of the first things you notice is how great it is to just pull over on the side of the road, have a meal, take a nap. That is something we could never do in our little teardrop trailer. Yes, we can take a nap, but there's no way we could have a little picnic on a roadside pullout overlooking views like this. East, do you like books? Yeah. What's your favorite book? I like this favorite book is my book. Now a 13 foot, this is where it, you know, maybe lacks a bit in comparison to its 16 foot counterpart. So the 16 foot fiberglass trailers and vintage trailers, many of the layouts come with a stationary table, meaning the table is always in place. And so to use your bed, you don't have to take it down to put the table up. These 13 foots, we love the size, but that is a bit of a disadvantage because every morning I have to tear down all the bedding, put up the table, and then do that again, depending on what I wanna use. Do I wanna eat or do I wanna sleep today? With a 16 foot trailer, you guys can do both. So both these trailers, when you first look at them, they appear to have the same amount of storage. But you quickly find out with this vintage trailer that I think maybe it's the wood design. There's just a lot more spaces to store things in here and things are just organized in a better way. So this trailer, for example, it is full of drawers. We've never had a trailer that has drawers and we now see the benefit in it. Not only can you fit a lot more items in your trailer, it allows you to be much more organized. So here is our hygienic items. Here are the items to start a fire. Here's where I keep my gloves and string and random things like that. So we find quickly in this trailer, we've become a lot more organized where the scamp, it took trip after trip to figure out how to do it right. So I love all the cupboard space. Like in here, you can put your pots and pans. Um, you the fiberglass trailers, the small ones, much of the usable space is hidden and you have to get under it. So it's under the bed, it's under your couch cushion. So you have to remove something to get your stuff out. So you have to be really thoughtful. What items am I not going to use often? I'll put them in there. And sometimes you just have to put your items in there because they're large. So one thing I should mention, the Scamp, I don't know about newer models, but it didn't have storage that you could access easily from the outside. Right here, we have a storage area. I put in all my chairs, all my firewood, all my chocks for uh, leveling the trailer and getting it in place. And so it's really nice because I can pull up to camp and not even have to go into the trailer to get the items I need to use. 
So the layout of the vintage trailer is why we ended up going with one of these. We knew there was a lot of maintenance involved. We knew they weren't durable like other trailers. But the first time I stepped into one of these, I was like, how can this be a 13 foot trailer? It just feels huge. And it does, it just feels different even though the dimensions are the same. And so why that is, for those of you who've been in fiberglass trailers, you know, the kitchen is lined up on the side of the trailer. On this trailer, the kitchen is in the front of the trailer, right behind the tongue. And this makes a big difference. This feels like a little micro tiny home, like an Airbnb. A scamp to us feels more like a nice travel trailer that gets you out in the woods, but it's not really a home to live in. It's kind of a temporary space. And that's because the fiberglass trailer, where that kitchen is placed, it feels like that person is always in the way. So it's basically like sharing a really tight little hallway. That kitchen is much too close to the bed and the table, and it's close to the bunks and trying to get outside, where when you're in one of these with the kitchen in the front, the person prepping and cooking is way away from the bed area and the seating area, and the whole area functions more like a living room than a hallway. Now that's an advantage if you're about living in this and being more inside. It's a disadvantage because it really impacts the towability of this. There's some issues we have with the layout of the Scamp, but those issues also make the Scamp an easier to tow vehicle because how it's laid out with the kitchen puts the weight right where it needs to be on the axle. So the Scamp, if you ever watch a video from like Elsa, Ray, and Baron, Baron is constantly picking that thing up and moving it around the campsite. And you can, we do it, we pick up that Scamp and move it around as well. We wouldn't suggest doing it all the time. It's still heavier than it looks. Baron's a pretty tough guy. But this trailer, when I pick this thing up, I mean, I look like I'm gonna get a hernia from it. And what that is, all the weight and the design of this thing is pushed to the front of the trailer. So it's all laying on the tongue. And we try to get the weight backwards, we try to get it over the axles, but there's really no storage over the axles and there's not a lot of placement to put weight in the back. And so again, if you're using a smaller car and towing is an issue, I don't think this would fit with some of your lower powered vehicles. Uh, if you're going to get a vintage, even though they weigh the same as a fiberglass trailer, definitely err on the side of caution. So let's say you have a 1500 pound towing capacity. In my mind, that's gonna be really pushing it. You're gonna want something up in that 2000 range so you feel more comfortable doing this. I love talking beds. The beds in this are going to probably shock you if you haven't seen them. So this little trailer, even though it's 13 foot, just like the Scamp trailer, the bed in here is a king size bed. So that's easily fitting our family of four. As you've seen in many of our videos, we typically sleep in a four foot wide bed, three of us in the teardrop, sometimes even four of us in the teardrop. So for us, this is like luxury. There is so much space, we don't even know what to do with it. Now, Scamp Trailer, a majority of the beds in there are about 44, 43 inches. So a twin is like 38 inches, a standard mattress, the one up, is about 54 inches, I believe. So basically that puts the Scamp mattress right in the middle between a twin and a standard. Now the newer Scamps, you can order, special order those beds to be 54 inches. Even one of the layouts, I think it's the one that has the bathroom in either the back or the front, you can get that one, it, it comes standard at 54 inches. But that is a lot smaller than this king size bed. And then on top of that, you have the placement of the bunks. On a fiberglass trailer, on many of the layouts, the bunks are in the front, where on this trailer, that's where our kitchen is. So the bunks are in the front of the fiberglass trailers. They can be converted into a nice little couch, which is nice. But because of the lack of storage that I mentioned earlier, you tend to store things during the day on that couch, and then you have to move it at night to put down the bunk. So it's kind of one of those hassles where you're going back and forth. 
And then the real beauty of this trailer, which we just love, is the bunks on this are above your head. So it takes away, you, you lose no livable space. So right where the bed is or the table is, above that is the bunks. And so you can still eat, you can still sleep, and then have the extra kids and relatives and neighbors sleeping up top. So it really has a lot of space for such a small little trailer. That just reminds me of the height of this trailer. That's a big difference, uh, and this is where the Scamp definitely wins. Most Scamp trailers, when you're inside, the interior is about six foot three inches. I don't know what the interior of this is. I'm guessing about six foot one, maybe, because when I'm in there with shoes on, my head's touching, and I'm only 5'11". I mean, my head's touching when I'm like stretching out, um, but when I go in there with my hat and shoes, I definitely bump, and that's at the highest point. This trailer uh, kind of tapers off as it gets to the back and gets shorter and shorter. And we have the square model. I'm guessing the rounded version of these compacts, which is the year before and earlier, I'm betting they're even tighter to fit in. Stinky baby making the trailer stinky. Don't go in the camper. It smells like poop. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna hear the family here because I had to get close to show you just a visual for the durability of these two trailers. Now this is a vintage trailer. Obviously it is not built like a tank. They're stick built, they're aluminum, there are seams everywhere. This guy, I'm going down the road and it's always in the back of my mind, when am I gonna get the first leak? When am I going to get, you know, skin coming off, the staples coming out? There's just so many little things. That's an ATV going by. So many little things that can go wrong with a trailer like this. We're a fiberglass trailer. It is rock star. I mean, honestly, everything you hear today, the end thought for me is fiberglass always wins because of durability. For us, we want to come out to a place like this and enjoy what we're doing. I never want to think in the back of my head, can my trailer handle this? Is water going to come in and ruin everything overnight? Fiberglass is built to last. It's pretty much exterior uh, maintenance free. You know, you're gonna have to wash it and wax it, but fiberglass doesn't ding like this. Paint's not scratching off. It's keeping all the elements out. There's no seams to seal. Yes, many of the fiberglass trailers are not sealed at the bottom, so your subfloor could rot out and you may have to replace that, but that's pretty minimal maintenance in comparison to a vintage trailer. Another video you may really be interested in is our Scamp versus Teardrop video here. And we also have a playlist over here which is just kind of comparing trailers, different styles to help you make your choice. See you all on the road soon.